On today's photo moment, we're going to be talking to two of my good friends who have recently been to India so they can show us their photos from India and we can talk about what it would be like if you want to join me there next year. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Not usually with friends, but today it is. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. This is Christopher Briscoe, longtime friend of mine, superb photographer. He's going to tell us a little bit about who he is, his background, and show us some of his photos from India. And then my dear friend, Eric Meinley, who I went to Mexico with last year, also a superb photographer, also recently have been to India. Gentlemen, welcome. Nice to see you again, Eric Meinley. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like this the whole time, just FYI. I'm kind of feisty today. This How are you feeling, Eric? You know? I think we could, at some point, I might just leave. Thing, just right? so we can, we can take this thing over. Have time so to get this is, uh, Ryan, you have control over their audio, right? You can at any point just... No beeps allowed. <laughs> Ryan says he can mute anybody. Uh, Mr. Briscoe, would you please tell my fine audience a little bit about yourself? Try to keep it to 30 minutes or less. Well, I've been a photographer since... Well, if you took all the years that... Joseph has been a photographer, and Eric has been a photographer, and then times that times six, you would get close. So I, I, uh, I was a photographer when we had film, and that wasn't the stuff in between your teeth. What's film? Yeah, no, no, no. It was, yeah, yeah. But anyway. You know, I started um, with film, you yeah. know. I was, I was a toddler, but I was shooting film. Oh, it was so fun. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not as much fun with my finger and my iPad, let me tell you. There you go. There is mm. that. So, uh, so you've been doing this for a little while. Uh, what kind of things do you, what, what, what has been your career of photography? What have you normally been shooting? All people stuff. People, people ask me a long time ago, what's, did you ever shoot landscapes? And I always say the greatest landscape is someone's face. I just see someone's face and I'm just compelled to, to, to photograph it. I like it. Very cool. Eric, who are you? Uh, what yes. are you doing <clears throat> on my show? Uh, <laughs> I heard there was going to be free muffins. I came in and, you know, what, you want me to talk about photography? Sure. Camera, click the button. Uh, my, fa my father was a photographer. I grew up in the dark room where they were developing film. And then very quickly, when digital came on, I jumped into digital. And for the last 10 or 15 years, I've been focused pretty seriously on photography. Among all the <laughs> I'm not, I'm not picking your butt. There's a, apparently a microphone buzz I'm trying to resolve. You got the microphone. Well, well, oh, should we I talk instead? I just fixed the ground here. <laughs> oh, the ground. It wasn't grounded. You're not going to. We're, we're gonna borrowing it. Sean's mics. He's, uh, I'm not quite sure what Sean is. Ooh, that's bad. I think oh, he might have sabotaged them. Can you hear me right? It's me. It can't be me. We don't need him. Let's take this All right. Okay. All right. So, about India. Yeah, hey, you guys it. talk about India. When did you go? Oh, I'll bet we have interference Before between you. the mics. Oh, well, I'll stand you over here. You paved the way so for me, right? right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I opened the uh -huh. gateway there. Yeah, you opened the gateway. Well, I got to tell you that Live for me, happens. it was the most... There were places like Varanasi. Five... Wait, if I, if, I'm, if I went before you, I should talk before you. <laughs> like, if you think you can... Yeah, please. Why? Well, I, I didn't well, finish my introduction. I'm going to have to stand oh, back really? here. Like, I don't know what's going yeah, on. This is really bad. Okay, well... You only have two things on your resume. So. <laughs> we got to the dark room with your dad. Yeah, okay, every, yeah, yeah. Everything Get I to ever, the high school I yearbook. Ever, oh, that's I exciting. Everything I ever learned with Chris Briscoe. Okay. But I'll tell you what. People often ask me what I like to photograph. And what I like to photograph is the human face. People say, well, what about landscape? And I say, <laughs> for me, the human face is the landscape. The contours, the mountains, the valleys, the changing moods, the seasons. For me, it's all about the I copyrighted that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it before you came here? Because that no, does take about six months to three years to actually go through. So, Is, back to your India thing. You went to India. <laughs> I got up here. We'll start the show over at some point. India. I want to see if so I can why figure were out what's you in India? Why was I, I, I went to India? Because it's a long story, and I'll try to make it long. Yeah. Um, there was an opportunity to work with a great organization there called the Self-Employed Women's Association, who I met through another photographic social documentary project I did. And I wanted to have a way to go to India that would take me into a somewhat daunting country, but with people to show me that country sort of from the inside out, as opposed to going there and not having any idea where I was going or what I was doing. So this organization, which is this huge um, women's union, invited me over to do a photographic project together mm. with them. And uh, it was the way to go as far as I was concerned. That's why I went. Mm. That's why I went initially, not quite knowing what I was going into. And 
Well, and then a bunch of things happened. I went for a month, and... We're rolling, brother. Oh, I know, we're rolling. We're, we're hoping. You guys just keep going. You're, you're good. I'm good. Is it still, still Arkin? Yes. It is. Well, so the thing I want to say about having gone to India for a month is that I'd spent 25 years of my life traveling in rural southern Mexico. Traveling off the beaten path, going to absolutely amazing places, doing a lot of photogra- photography out there. And when I went to India and spent some, you know, within the first few days in India, it had redefined for me what amazing was. Didn't you do a book about that project? The, uh, the Mexico one? Yes. Yeah, I did do a book about that. I did uh, a book called Walk of Stories and Cloth. It was this. And in, in, in the project uh, for the Oaxaca book, I'm going deep into rural Oaxaca. I wind up going into rural India. And, and as I was saying, it redefines for me. It's like if, if this is my meter of what's amazing in the world, boom, India does this mm-hmm, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like it just completely mm-hmm. reworks it. Yeah. And about halfway through India, I'm trying to redefine my life. I'm like, wait, what? I should have done this for the last 25 years of my life. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are an opportunity to experience that, but it gives them a little bit of a safety buffer in that a lot of people that are going to be part of this tour have been there. You know, it's not like he's just going to throw you out in the middle of <laughs> Varanasi. So it's, you know, when I went, I just threw myself out in the middle. I went all over India, and where I could, I would rent these little mopeds and go into these little villages. And um, But if I didn't have really, you know, the kind of... Uh, uh, people that that Joseph has with him running this tour. Yeah, well, <clears throat> along those lines, again, like having people who could take me to certain places, knew how to. Uh, it took me it took me several days just to figure out how to buy water in India. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> but so metaphorically, those are several days kind of lost. Whereas if you had thirsty. been with a tour group that you know that Joseph has, they're going to show you. Don't you know when you go in the shower. Put duct tape over your lips. <laughs> you know when you when you brush your teeth. When, when you go on photo, Joseph. When you show. brush your teeth, you know, use some bottled water or no water. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That could lose you more than just a few days making that one mistake. Yeah. There you go. Well, having having um, having people who created access, who helped you understand, mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. uh, what to do, where to go, mm-hmm. made a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Again, it's like. It's like, <laughs> what the heck is this guy? I just, I just, I'm mic'd up, wired. Am Let's I? Hope. Ryan, you can adjust now. Hopefully this actually works. Um, I, I just, uh, my wireless packs are interfering with the wireless packs that Sean brought for some reason. We didn't have time to readjust them, but we're just going to go for it wired this way. Just don't stand up because you will rip my, like, shirt off. Oh, I don't want to rip that off. Yeah. Definitely don't want to. Um, so, should we start the show? Or do you guys um, already finish? No, you well, like you're having a you fantastic know, um, conversation with Alvin. It looks like it looks like I'm just starting to read this, like all this stuff. I guess the audio is pretty bad. Oh, it was. Well, yeah, there was a darn. massive, massive. I'll turn your part. Well, enough about me. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I heard right. you could ask me. You could, this would be a good time. I actually I do. Well, yeah. Gap. I mean, I gap. Think, okay, we can, gap. we can start with that. This might be a good time for you to ask me some questions. Wait, we're gonna let Joseph, Joseph MC. Oh, okay. I, it's okay. I mean, you guys will find without me. I, honestly, even with mm-hmm. my my mic being bad, it may as well just be you guys. It works for me. Well, so the the both have been to India recently, as uh, undoubtedly you've just heard. I heard about half may of the conversation. May or may not have heard any of that. And uh, we the whole point of this today is to talk about the India experience to make sure that you guys understand, especially those who are thinking about coming to India with me in January of next year. Which, incidentally, let's just bring that up on the screen real quick, is so that you are prepared for this. You understand what it is we're getting into from both a physical and mental expectation, but also to understand what we're going to see out there. It is going to be an absolutely phenomenal experience with opportunities to make phenomenal images, which is what we're, we're here to talk about and to take a look at some of their photos and get some of the stories behind them. So now that you've already talked about why you went, right? So you got that part out of the way from me while I was off playing around. Why did you go? Did you both get that in? Chris didn't really get to say that. Why did, did you did go? You want I, to wanted, I went there because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. You know, and I knew that of all the places on the planet, you know, other than Fallujah or someplace, you know, I know that going to India would get me out of my comfort zone. And when I was there, I purposefully, you know, that wonderful uh, film, uh, Slumdog Millionaire, I found the slum and I went in deep into the slum. 
And I really pushed my, my limits. Um, not only to take great pictures, or what could be great pictures, but also to have the experience of, of meeting all these people all over India. And it took me a month, you know, maybe six weeks to do that. Wow. Now you were traveling on your own, but you had, do you have guides along the way that you hired in, as you got to a new city? Sometimes I would need a driver who was my guide. And they'd all say that they spoke English. Well, don't count on that. Maybe 10 words, 11 words. And then by the end of the time with my guide, he'd finally know what I was all about. No, I don't want to go into any more Buddha museums. No, no, no. And then, you know, he would go deep in with me in, into the slums with me. And sometimes I would just say, you know, I'll meet you back here in uh, three hours. And I would walk in to a slum. And the thing that made all the difference for me was not a guide, but this thing. This is a photo printer. And a lot of people make them. This one, I think, is made by Polaroid. And the ink, I mean, the uh, papers are all made by this company called Zinc, which stands for Zero Ink. And I would go into a slum, and they would look at me like, who is this guy here, this foreigner? What is he doing here? And then I would ask permission to take one picture of one family or a guy in his old barber shop or whomever, and I would give him that picture. And for the rest of the day, I would be surrounded by people. And it was the greatest experience. You know, when we take pictures, we call it taking pictures. And I didn't want to do that. You know, a lot of us show pictures in the back of our camera to the right. person and say, oh yeah, I'll mail you some. Well, it never happens, you know. So for me to have this little gem and me to be able to hand them their first picture. One guy was so grateful, he was, he was staring at it, he kissed my hand. And, you know, talk about payback for a photographer. You know, I would take a kiss on the hand rather than a, a check any day. I, I still like money. Gotta pay well, buddy, but that's, that is awesome. I mean, for that experience, no, that it was, is fantastic. It was incredible. Uh, I, I think, because you were telling me about these printers, I think that when we go, we're going to get our hands on a couple of these because I do want to have that type of experience. Uh, There's no ink in this. It's a thermal thing. And um, the sheets cost about 45 cents a piece. They have a peel-off backing that will stick on anything forever. Yeah. And um, it's all Bluetooth, and you hook it up to your phone or your iPad or whatever, and it spits out this picture. It's incredible. And to see the look on someone's face, who you can assume sometimes anyway, they've never had a picture of themselves mm. handed to them. That's yeah, incredible. And awesome. especially as a sticker. Especially as a sticker. The first time that you showed me that, I got my first self-portrait sticker, by the way. Did I put it on your forehead? I put or? it on the bumper of your car. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I had a hard good, time peeling good, that off. Good place for it. Well, there you go. You know they last. So let's take a look at some photos. Um, we're going to go back and forth, which I can already tell is going to be a recipe for chaos and disaster. Perfect. And uh, we're going to start with one of uh, one of Mr. Briscoe's photos here. So, Chris, take it away. What are we looking well, at? Well, this is just a typical scene of Mumbai. And what it is is carefully controlled chaos. People are going different directions. Uh, when it's dark at night, only for some reason about 40% of the people have their lights on. People are running across the streets. You know, there's no, there's, there's just no control, but it's, it's got its own flow that people go with. And, you know, I remember uh, making a friend and, and trying to explain to him what road rage was. <laughs> and he, he sat there for half an hour, and I'd go over and over, and he couldn't understand. And I looked at bicycles, thousands of them by train stations, and I found, I think I counted three bicycles that were locked. And someone said, why would someone want to steal your bicycle? And it's a great mindset. It's based on, you know, 10 different religions and many different sects of it. When the sun comes up in the morning, people are out on their balconies honoring the sun, praying. When it goes down, they're praying. It's, it's, a, it's a place that will give you much more than just getting you out of your comfort zone. Love it. That's a great start. And that really does set, it gives a good idea of what to expect, what it looks like there. Well, and so in reference to this photo, the first morning I wake up in India, and I'm in a city called Ahmedabad, which has 9 million people in it. I walk out of this hotel, and I walk to the cross section, the, the intersection there. And I spend 30 minutes just standing at the intersection, watching the traffic move around. It was so amazing. Like, it's like, I don't know, it, it was better than any television program I've like ever ballet, seen. Just the way people yeah, just it's somehow a strange kind of ballet. It, somehow almost never hitting each other. And just like all that humanity moving like that. And then at a certain point, I was like, I want to get to the other side. 
And then I spent a while figuring out how to do that. Half hour just across the street. <laughs> it reminds me of you know those it's, thousands it's a game of birds. Of, it's a game of trust and nerves. Yeah. yeah. And then once you figure it out, it works. And every time you do it, your your adrenaline starts going. You know, because we're new at this. We don't we, <laughs> we don't know how to do this. At the same time, uh, I uh, one of the people who was hosting me in India, she said, "Yeah, I'm telling her about my my experiences trying to cross the street in this town." She says, "Well, you know, when I went to San Francisco and I wanted to cross the street in San Francisco, I almost got killed." Probably just stepped out in front of traffic expecting people to move around her. Yeah, that's yeah. how it's supposed to work, right? Yeah. So uh, the game rules are the game rules. Yeah, definitely different. So um, for those who are watching live, if you have any questions for any of us up here, put them up in the chat room and make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of it, even if it's for them. You can still type their name, but that way we'll see it on the screen and we'll know that we've got a question in there. Um, Trevor did have a question already. He's asking how, how safe is it for photographing in India? Um, were you ever at concern about your gear, your personal safety? I never was, never, ever, ever once. But that said, you know, I don't, I switched from the big Canons and Nikons a few years ago to the much smaller uh, flip up screen Sony's. And I know Lumix has the same thing. And the great thing about that camera system is it fits in a sling bag underneath my arm. I have two bodies, I've got my printer, I've got three lenses, and I'm not pointing at people hunting with them. And a lot of times, you know, I would just go up and ask. And then when, of course, when I would give them the picture, then that would, that would just be yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. But I never, ever, ever felt, um, I felt out of my comfort zone a lot of times, but never um, threatened. Uh, so when I first went wading out to this city, before I was uh, met by the people who were hosting me, I had no idea what to expect there. And first I've got my, my camera in my backpack. I'm carrying a Nikon with a lens, you know, and I pull my camera out. I don't know what's going to happen. There's people everywhere. Nobody cares. And then I get the nerve up to take. I'm not a street photographer. Right? That's not how I approach it. I, I do it in a different way. Chris is very good at doing street photography and creating access that way. But for me, that's different. Pull the camera out. I can't help it, right? The, the scenes are so beautiful. I take a picture of somebody. They're fine with that. Take another picture. And then somebody over here says, Sir, will you take my picture, please? Mm. And... <laughs> Not only did I not find it, I found it to feel very safe. And again, this is, I'm, I'm in this particular city, in this particular place, I'm the only big foreigner around. This is, that was not in a very touristy city. Um, it felt safe to me and it felt friendly. And i in my travels, I've never been to a place where people are more open to having their photo taken. Yes. First of all, open everything. And then, and then the other part is that what, Beautiful people everywhere. Mm -hmm. What beautiful scenes. I mean, mm -hmm. you, it's a hard time taking well, a bad a picture in India. This photo right here, your first photo. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is in, a, in mm -hmm. a village in a little place called the Little Round of Cooch. And there you have it, right? I mean, as, as I wandered around the cities of India and the villages of India, it looked like it was a constant fashion show. Mm -hmm. Women are dressed beautifully all the time. All the time. In saris and scarves and colorful long skirts and silver anklets and uh, earrings and nose rings and hemp um, tattoos on their hands and smiles and amazing eyes. Uh, not a hard place to do photography. No, and especially if people are being so welcoming and, and yeah. allowing you to just step in and take their picture or encouraging it, asking yes. for it. Even Did you find a lot of people come up to you and want, ask if they could have your picture, their picture taken with you? Uh, well, now, if I answer that in a way that's true, you're going to say that they did with you because you're so damn handsome, and they didn't with me because I'm not. But the answer is, no, uh, I didn't. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that is. <laughs> well, it's it happened. Seven feet tall. It happened. It yeah, wouldn't fit in the frame. With moi, it happened uh, often when I would go to tourist areas for Indian people. And they would see, you know, me, the only white guy, and they would want a picture taken with me. And then they would put it on Facebook and say, oh, look at this white guy that we knew. He's our best buddy. <laughs> so <laughs> that was really cool. That, that was really cool. cool. That is too much fun. All right, Chris, you're up. Let's take a look at another picture. So this is in uh, the Slumdog Millionaire um, slum. And, you know, you can see how the, the width of this alley, just a few feet. And every, every day they would reel out a long garden hose. And if you live there, you would have access to it for 15 minutes a day. Fill up every pot and pan you could, take a shower, whatever. And um, that was an amazing experience. Uh, there was one toilet for every 1,200 residents. And in this particular slum, there are six million residents. So um, it I mean, was- Putting things in perspective. Putting like things in perspective. We have 
between three and five people at any given time and two bathrooms, and you're still fighting over the bathroom sometimes. <laughs> uh, it's just, that's unbelievable. Wow, it's gorgeous. Mr. Eric. Uh, once again, India just provides incredible scenes. Another rural village and in a household with a woman who does farming, uh, dairy, and I turn around and see the light coming off the wall and I say, oh, will you please stand there? Okay. And we're talking about water in a lot of the rural villages. Water is carried that way. You can see the pots on her head. You fill the water in three pots. One goes on top of another and the mm. other under your arm. And then mm. you walk back. So imagine the next strength for doing that. <laughs> you try putting one of those, I try putting one of those pots on my head and Did it's you? like my neck cracks. Oh, <laughs> and at what age her mom or dad taught her how to do that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Cool. We got some cool stuff coming up in the comments. Um, a few folks from India watching right now. Oh. Um, Shadok saying you're from India. Thank oh. you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, Shahid saying thank you for uh, for the show. That's awesome. Um, also, Shadok has a question to suggest one or two uh, Panasonic Leica primes for street photography in India. So he's asking, and I'm sorry I can't put the comments up like I normally do. Mm -hmm. It's part of the new 4K system here, but uh, 1517 or the 1214. For me personally, I think the 1517 is great. That is a 30 millimeter equivalent. Um, that for me personally is a very good uh, street photography focal length. I like to get close. I like to be up and personal. And that lens kind of forces you to do that because it's quite a wide field of view. So in full frame is a 30 millimeter equivalent. That would be, if I was going to take one lens out for street photography, that would be it. Eric, which, what would be, I know you're not traditionally a street <laughs> photographer, but what would you prefer length off based off of this trip? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that doesn't know a lot about lenses. I've got one lens because I like to travel light and simple and I'm sort of a caveman. And so I've got an 18 to 200 and that's all I ever carry with me. Right. Makes it there easy. you go. Yeah, makes it easy. Just to prove, especially as you look through the photos here, you don't have to have the top of the line latest and greatest equipment to make the picture. It's, it's all about these things up here. That yeah. they help a lot. Yeah, they do help a lot. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Do you have a, a preferred focal length for street photography? Well, with my Sony uh, 6500, I have two zoom lenses that I, I carry. One is a 10 to 18, and the other one is probably a 24 to 200. But um, I have one on one body and one on the other because I don't want to be dinking around changing lenses. Sure. And, you know, I could take prime lenses, which would be a little bit sharper, but I'd rather go for content and not worry about having it tack sharp with the perfect bokeh and all that, but I want to get the shot. Fair enough. And I don't care if I have to use my iPhone. You know, in fact, there's one picture in here that I use my iPhone. Nice. Well, there you go. So a lot of variety in there. It's not, there is no one right answer. It is very much a personal thing. Um, but to answer your question about that lens, specifically the 15, for me, I think that's perfect. The 12, that'd be a 24 mil equivalent, probably a little bit too wide. But again, that's, that's just for me, how I feel. Mr. Briscoe, what are we looking at here? Oh, I was uh, near Tibet in uh, Darjeeling, where they make grow the tea. And this woman was a Tibetan refugee. It was freezing, and here she is on the floor, bundled up, and her spinning wheel is an old bicycle rim. And she's got her wool there, and that was uh, what she did all day long. Nice. Beautiful. It looks cold. It was very cold, very cold. Eric. Uh, this is south of Amnabad, out in the countryside, and we were telling a story about this woman's union. She's a tobacco picker, and she spends all day picking tobacco. You can see the, uh, the grime on her hand yeah. from the, whatever that stuff is on the tobacco. But also <laughs> telling a story about, well, you know, this is how we've organized so that our wages are better. This is how we've learned to stand up and speak for ourselves at, oh, wow. at, 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 at town meetings or when we have to go to government officials. So this is sort of behind story around what this organization is doing, what Sewa is doing. Um, but that picture just, one of the things I like about that picture is that one commonly, um, it's not uncommon to try to photograph misery. Mm. And you can think, well, if you work all day working in a tobacco field or something like that, oh, poor misery, poor misery. She, she wasn't complaining about that. She was happy to have the work she was doing. You know, you can see that subtle smile on her face. She's like, this is life, this is what we do. Your things are all right. And, and I'm empowered because I'm part of this organization. Right. And so sort of what I was wanting to say mm -hmm. with that picture. I found that gratitude was a theme that I saw every single day on people's faces. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, you know, I had this, whenever I could, I'd get this little moped and ran up from someone, and I'd go into deep into these villages. And this is typical expression on someone's face who looks like he had never really seen a picture of himself before. And uh, again, gratitude. He was so grateful, and I was so grateful, just to be able to spend time with him in this little tiny village that had just dirt 
dirt streets. Um, and there I was. We got a question from Trevor coming up about the previous photo. Let me pull this back up again. Trevor's asking if this has fill flash. Yeah, that. and and uh, I think the one before it did as well. Um, because I was doing a specific project and I like to work with flash, I'm, I've got somebody behind the scenes holding a single flash behind an umbrella. Right. And so, yeah, there's fill flash on that. Yeah, and that's a big part of your style for doing these portraits. Mm -hmm. you know, we did the same thing in Mexico, mm -hmm. set that up specifically mm -hmm. to have that fill flash. And it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And yeah. It really does. The ability to balance that out and have your background be whatever it is you want it to be, but then illuminate, it could be darker, it could be brighter, whatever, but have control over the background separate from the foreground. Yeah. Make your yeah. subject lit the way you want them lit. The background can be lit completely differently, not relying on the ambient light. That can be fantastic. Yeah, that's a great, great example of that. Yeah, like I'm shooting straight into the sunset, right? into the into the low sun right. behind her, right? So if I wasn't shooting this with flash, then she'd, it'd be really hard to get light on her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but with a flash, you can do that kind of effect, which I absolutely love. I find it beautiful and dramatic. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Alrighty, so yeah, see, so you're still up here. Let's bring you back to. Your next um, photo. Yeah, now we're out further in the Rana Cooch in these huge salt flats, salt. and okay. she's the daughter of a family that makes salt, and Ooh. she will make salt like they did. And again, this is with a fill flash. You can almost see it in her eyes. Again, backlit or side lit by the sun, and a story again of being part of this organization. They have solar pumps that pump the water to fill out these big lakes that they then let evaporate away. And that came to the organization, and they're also organized in a trade network that allows them to sell their salt at better price. Um, so, you know, ultimately, hopefully, this creates a livelihood for your kids that's a little bit better than it was when you were a kid. Right. Absolutely. Excellent. So, I want to remind people too that we're watching this that we are we're doing this so that you guys can see what India is like. So you can see what the photographs are like, the experiences that we can have. We are doing a workshop um, in India next year in January 2019. Let me just pull up a, a little slide for that. But if you're interested in this, just head over to photojoseph.com slash India. You can get all the information. It's a it's a big trip. It's a, I don't want to say scary trip because that's, that's not the word that I want to use, but it is not for the faint of heart. And that's part of why we're doing this to for you to see not only the benefits of it, you're going to get these incredible images, but to understand a bit more about the experience of what we'll be getting into there. Uh, this is going to be a once in a lifetime experience, but it is not going to be an easy experience. When we were talking about the other day, um, I saw a sign in a hotel in Bangkok once that said, Bangkok is not for beginners. And, mm -hmm. and I feel that way about India. Mm -hmm. I says, you know, if you've mm -hmm. never been out of the Western world, India's probably not your first, your best first trip to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, all of us have traveled the world our entire lives. We've been around, we've seen a lot of things. And a place like this is still, like you said, you went there to get out of your comfort zone. Yes. It is. And I found Bangkok, I love Bangkok, but I found it as, you know, a, a vacation. But going to India is an adventure. That's and that's the way you have to look yeah. at it. It yeah. is an adventure that you will never forget. How many people are you accepting in this so workshop? So we can do up to eight. Oh, uh, is on that workshop. all? That's it. Yep, small group. So oh, nice size. Yeah, it's, oh. it's going to be a nice, small, intimate group. And just so people understand, too, uh, we're talking about uh, Chris was able to hire local drivers, someone to help him out. They didn't mm -hmm. always speak English. We have everything organized and planned to the point where the, there's a company that I'm working with there in India called Kipling Tours, and they are organizing all the ground transportation, the locations, guides, um, escorts the entire way. We will never be without at least one, if not two, professional people who are used to working with photographers. The, the purpose of what this company does is they organize tours like this for photographers. So it's not like we're going on a museum tour and we're all going to be going, come on, I can't take any pictures. This is designed 100% start to finish for <clears throat> photographers. And so this is, it's going to be an absolute visual feast, the things that we're going to be able to see and experience there. It took me a few days with my, my interpreter just to train that person on what I was interested in. Right. And then finally, after a few days, he kind of got it. And to go into a situation like this with a group like yours who knows exactly why you're there, that's, that's gold. That's, gonna be that's great. great. I, see, I see a comment up on the, on the chat here by, by Shahid who says, I have been photographing in India for over 30 years, oh, no place like it. Right? You're right, Shahid. I absolutely agree. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. The, the most amazing things I've ever seen. People, humanity, experiences. I mean, you know, I don't put pictures here of, of the monkeys flying through the trees in the cities or the camel cart being pulled through the middle of that crazy traffic, but that's going on as well. The sacred cows that are in the middle of the, the roundabout with tons of cars going around them. Um, and, and again, the beauty of humanity. Like, you know, if <laughs> it's, it's a challenge to go and be there, it's a lot harder than going to uh, probably Norway to photograph, but 
it's the kind of thing that's going to stay with you forever. You're going to remember it. It will blow your mind. And, um, and I'll go back. I'll go back as much as I can. Like it's the, it's the, it's the kind of, if you're a photographer and you like humanity, that's it. tops it. It tops it. Just hands down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're teasing about the human landscape of the face there. I mean, there is, is the, it's the Himalaya of landscapes, right? Mm -hmm. absolutely. Literally and also metaphor, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it also <laughs> gives you a perspective on where you live. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and how much we just take for granted here and get all upset about little tiny things and yeah. not necessarily where our next meal is going to come from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no doubt. No doubt. Chris, this one's yours. Oh, another day when I was on my little motor scooter, went in this little village and the doors open and, and they invite me into their home and, and then I start making pictures and that's how I spent all of my favorite days, talking with someone like this, being in a home with a family. Um, seriously, I did not want to come back to America. I had a hard time with reentry. Did you really? Yeah. And you, how long again were you there? I was there for six weeks, and then I hopped on a plane and I went to uh, Cambodia for another week. It was like a, your decompression stage, Cambodia. Yeah, in exactly. Yeah, <laughs> in the ironically, doing a story on a woman who worked who, in a garbage dump. That was my decompression. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. And here we are. Speaking of the devil, of the another devil. garbage <laughs> dump. This is the this is the garbage dump outside of that city of nine million of Amnivad, and again, these women are part of this self-employed women's association union. Uh, they're hundreds and hundreds of people who work as rag pickers at the dump. Uh, again, this is Flash Phil. They, they, you see the dogs in the background. They said, all right, listen, stay away from the dogs. Move closely. <laughs> the people who took me up there, those dogs are... Mm. Yeah. Uh, but the setting was phenomenal, amazing. And again, like easy to take the misery picture of the dump. Oh, my God, life must be hell because you're, you're working in the dump. Well, life isn't great because you're working in the dump, but it doesn't mean that you've lost your heart, your humor, your humanity. And again, with that picture, what I wanted to say is, okay, this is what we do for a living. Um, we're human beings. We're full of light. We're also full of joy. We're also full of sadness. Who isn't? And that our surrounding is the dump of Amnabad, which is jokingly referred to as the hill station of Amnabad because Amnabad's on the plane. And the highest thing around Amnabad is this, <laughs> the dump. The dump pile. Wow. So the, the, the Amnabad hill station. Um, mm. but, uh, but, but also the, the simple humor of being alive. Wonderful. <laughs> oh. oh, that's great. You know, 100 years ago, I used to teach third grade in, uh, in Oregon, and uh, this reminded me of when I used to teach third grade. All these kids, I would go to these monasteries and start making pictures, and they would be climbing all over me. Uh, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. That's great. And there's your printer in your hand and some of the prints printer you made. Printer in my hand. That is so cool. Uh, happy kids. That's awesome. Mm. Mm. This woman was sad. She, she was talking about a series of incidents that happened in her lives that made things difficult for her. And, you know, it's another story. But um, she had a way of, you can see it in the picture, just gazing into the camera, talking to me through an interpreter about what was going on in her life. And yet, because she was, again, part of this organization that I was looking at, the bottom hadn't fall out, fallen out completely. She had the support of a community around her even when... Uh, in other circumstances, that probably wouldn't have been available to her. But there's just this this deep sincerity in that gaze, uh, a beauty in this this sort of resolved presence, a certain kind of sadness, um, and really one of my favorite pictures. Now, this is all just natural light. <laughs> and though I like to use fill flash, there were so many places there where, well, you can always find the light, but there it's like, you know, fill flash just wrecks this. You have right. such wonderful light coming through either side of the windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know one of your photos coming up later on uh, that's just natural light. It's just mm. it's a great example of that. It's beautiful. Um, Shirag Parik in there is saying that he lives in Ahmedabad. Oh, oh wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shirag, I'd love to meet you next time I'm there. Oh. I'm going to be back there um, one of these coming wow. falls soon. And you must know the dump. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, have a, a pocket full of uh, rupees or dollar bills and hand them out. I strongly suggest that you do not do that. It changes the whole dynamic. And, you know, that's not to say that they couldn't use a buck or two, but it changes the dynamic. And that's why I used this printer. I wanted to give them something, 
But um, I, I was one of the slums I was in, I had an interpreter, and at the end, I gave this uh, sweet little old lady a couple of rupees, and he ripped into me. He said, look, these people are working hard here, they're proud of it, and by you doing this, it kind of wrecks that. Mm. So uh, I never forgot that. So this is, this is the fun yeah, the, you can have. Being able to hand over a print is, it's a fantastic currency. Mm -hmm. To be able to give that to someone and give them yep. something that they don't have, that they don't normally get. Any tourist can give them a couple of bucks, but you give them a photo, and not just any photo, it's a great photo of them taken right there that's a memory they'll have forever. So it's really, that's really fantastic. Our title photo, Eric. Title photo. Um, I went there to take pictures of women who are part of this community's uh, cotton cotton picking group. You can see all the cotton behind him. Mm. And grandfather was sitting on a bed on the side porch, lighting up some wonderful old pipe. <laughs> Going into these places, into these households, in these villages, you know, coming from my Western imagination, I'm like, God, I feel like I'm in a hundred and a thousand and one Arabian Nights. The the characters, the kinds of pipes. It's just such a different looking world, such a different feel, different smells. Fabulous, fabulous, you know, like unbeatable. And grandfather's sitting there and do you mind if I take my picture? No, he doesn't mind if I take his picture. Um, you know, Chris is talking about handing out photos, but one of the things that I found super interesting is that people would ask me to take their picture. Sir, would you please take my picture? Sure, I'll take your picture. Uh, and that's all they wanted. They didn't even care to see it on the back of the camera, hmm, really? curiously enough. It's just the interest of having someone take their picture. Really? I need somebody from India to explain to me why that's true. I haven't encountered that anywhere else I've gone. I'll huh. take my picture because I want to do an exchange with you, and that might be an exchange for a photo, that might be an exchange for currency, or it might be an exchange for seeing the backside of your camera. But so many people in India were like, just, I'm just happy that you take my wow. picture. Like Somehow having that picture taken is a gift of attention, wow. and that in and of itself is enough. Well, maybe Shahid will be able to enlighten you on that. Um, he's, he's saying in here also, please do not give out money. So that's... that's yes, great. really important. Yeah, very good. Uh, <laughs> nice. uh, you know, how much fun is this? You know, just hanging out with the kids, jumping. You know, it, it just was, was a blast. And you know, what can I say? Uh, this moment is, is there forever in uh, my file system. And whenever I look at this, I can go back to that exact moment. So... You know, I've got to say that I want to go to your workshop. <laughs> you know, one of the things that your workshop is around is the Holy Man Festival, right? And I've heard that these holy men are out in these caves meditating all year long, and they come out once a year for this festival. So this, this festival, the Kumbh Mela, that we're going to be there for, uh, it's only every, I think it's every six years, and then what we're there for is the Half Mela. And mm -hmm. the Half Mela will only have, only have about 60 million people over <sighs> the... I believe it's six weeks wow. full duration. Oh, um, so gosh. we're, I, this is the, the by far the biggest and kind of most intimidating part of this trip is we're going to be in a remote city. It's not like it's, we're in the middle of Delhi where there normally are that many people. We're going to be in a remote city with 60 million other human beings. Mm -hmm. And clearly there is no mm -hmm. hotel infrastructure to handle that many people. So they have these massive tent cities and we have... What really, and you can see these pictures on the website, um, you, if you head over to thephotojustice.com slash India, scroll down and you'll see the pictures of the tent cities, but they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. We're going to be staying in these, what are, for all intents and purposes, luxury tents with private baths and showers mm -hmm. and everything, but in the heart of 60 ah, million people. That's going to be It's going to be, yeah, and that is, there's no doubt, that is going to be overwhelming. That is going to be incredible for anybody who's not, even if you're from New York City, and you're yep. used to being around oh, yeah, those no. people. This is going to be <laughs> nothing, this is going to be a big deal. Nothing will compare. I think I think I think it's going to be a challenge, and I think it's going to be like the the challenge is most worthwhile doing. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like, that kind of access, that kind of experience, that doesn't come along every other day. You should life. both come then. They okay. will yeah, never forget friends. it. You'd be the friend they will deal. Never forget it. I'm not taking all your flashes <laughs> you know, and gears. Taking a picture next to him. I'm not He's taking the gear and stickers the on my the whole time. I don't stuff. want more stickers on my glasses and stuff. <laughs> Uh, a side of India that, that shows up a little less in, 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 in photographs is this rural side. And this is a banyan tree, these trees that have this huge trunk. Mm. And then all, the, all these branches that come back down into the soil and create new trees. And so this group of women that I'm photographing here are from uh, a weaver's collective that's in this town called Sihol. And we were doing a certain kind of photo. In, it was a setup photo that I was doing with them, a group portrait. As they were waiting around for that, and as other things were going on, this appears, right? Mm. 
absolutely beautiful. And, and it's sort of this timeless, ancient feel in this. Excellent. So a lot of times I would just find an alley that I loved. And I would just sit down there and wait. And uh, this time I waited for probably an hour and a half. And then right out of the doorway, boom, comes this kid. So a lot of it is waiting. A lot of it is finding just the right light, the right background. And some people take their own lights and make their own lighting and, and stuff like that. But, oh, did I cut off on that? No, that's okay. You're oh. just bumping the mic. Just trying to keep you from running into it too much. Oh, good. Great. Uh, there was a question that Hi, came Eric. up on a previous photo. <laughs> I, I missed it. Were you, were, was there a jab there that... Oh, you missed the whole thing? I missed it, man. Yeah. I was reading, oh, I was reading no. the comments up oh, here. They're talking great. about 30 million people. Uh, at the festival on on the main bath day. So if you were trying to jab that. me, I was no. I didn't say a word. I was just saying how great, whatever. <laughs> how much you admire my photography and I yes. admire yours. That's beautiful. Yes. Right? That's, and it's and it's true, by the way. It it's is true. true. It is true. Sometimes well, there was a question that came up. Someone asked if this was the final aspect ratio of this photo. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that, mm. other than um, it was cropped this way, clearly intentionally. Mm. And I think the only reason I brought that question up is I wanted to make the point that. When you're shooting digital and you're shooting four screens, specifically shooting four screen, it doesn't matter what the aspect ratio is. Uh, it can be anything you want. It doesn't have to fit a particular print size of five by seven or eight by ten, eleven by fourteen. It just doesn't matter. And if you wanted to print any aspect ratio photo these days, you can. Any decent printer will basically print it to the closest size, near size, and then trim off the extra. So aspect ratio is largely irrelevant. Well, I'll tell you the backstory of it. Um, I did not take uh, my laptop with me. I edited for six weeks on my iPad, mostly with Snapseed, which is free, and this finger. So um, yeah, I would want to upload stuff on uh, Instagram, which is Chris Briscoe, right? Yeah, at is Chris that Briscoe. What is? That's that what it is, yes. <laughs> and um, that's why I cropped it that way. So <laughs> that's the only reason <laughs> I cropped Instagram it that way. Crop. And then five minutes before the show, I said, hey, I got to go to Joseph's. So I got out my um, iPad, and I just got a bunch of pictures and cropped whatever way and put them on a thumb drive for Joseph. So it's that's, all about being prepared. It's all about being prepared. <laughs> but seriously, you do not need to take a laptop. You can, if, if you have an iPad that you love and Snapseed, you can edit everything by then. And I would, all, obviously, you're going to back up to the cloud when you can, and you're going to have some thumb drives, you know, a lot of thumb drives that you're not going to format or delete when you're there. So you're going to have some backup. But you don't need to carry any stuff. Just get a couple bodies and a couple lenses in that, in that uh, sling bag. There you go. And you're ready. The NAR box, something I've been talking about on the channel quite a bit, a little product for archiving your photos while you're on the road. Is it like a portable hard drive? It's or? a portable hard drive, and it's a small computer you can access from your phone or tablet, mm -hmm. so that you cool. can actually access those photos. Does it have a little screen on it that you can see? No, no. It's it's for storing the photos, and then the screen is your iPhone or your iPad. Oh, I see. That connects to it wirelessly, oh, so you nice. have a, an archive there, and it's, uh, yeah. It's, and how big, how big a device um, do they have? I think 256 or 512 gigs are the size now, and then you can plug in a small external hard drive to nice. it as well. So if you don't want to carry the laptop, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a pretty good option, pretty good way to go. Um, all righty. So someone was saying that the link in the description is broken. Um, looks like I might have mistyped it at some point, but it's uh, photojoseph.com slash India. We will fix that link in the description as soon as we can. All right. Uh, let's see here. Where were we? You know, we Jerry were Matheson is watching us. I right saw now. that. Yeah. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> where were we? This was, there we go. This is the photo that's next. Let's pull this back up. Okay. So uh, natural light, the beauty of natural light, of course. And this is, this is Eric going out in the street as not a street photographer, walking out at 7.30 a.m. through some back alley of Omnibad. And this guy is a mechanic, and I'm just mm. walking along, looking for pictures, have my camera out, which ends mm. up being an invitation. Mm. And we don't share a language at all. They speak Gujarati, I speak English and Spanish. None of those were, <laughs> they <laughs> didn't work. Compatible. And yet, and yet through, through sign language and smiles, I'm invited in. Somebody runs off on a bicycle and comes back with uh, bags of hot chai tea, and we sit down and we share this chai tea, which is absolutely, mm. this treat chai mm. tea and delicious. It, it, chai tea in India is so good. Yeah. Um, and I sit there and we don't have a conversation and smile and laugh for 10 or 15 uh, minutes. Share tea. I take a few pictures and, you know, this is, this is me not being a street photographer right. and being able to achieve something like that. India uh -huh. allows that. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, you know, here I am on my moped in a little village and, you know, I looked at the, this picture on my iPad and I looked at the grace of it. And this could be 
a, a Vogue magazine model, you know. It, it, it's just the grace of who they are. And, uh, you know, with that little camera, I just did the flip up screen and I just, you know, you, it'll shoot like 10 frames a second or something. And so you just put it down and, brrr, and you got it there. And, and you might sit down next to her and show her a picture or you might keep walking or whatever. But, the, you know, the texture, the hands, every line there tells a story of her life. And as um, Eric was talking about earlier, the colors, you know, the textures in the background, uh, it's it's an amazing place. So I'm going to your workshop. Oh, I, I think you should. I am I going. <laughs> uh, Shahid is uh, giving some more insight into this, into the Kumela, saying they create an independent city for the Kum with its own town management, police force, medical services, and civil defense. Incredible. Mm. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, they'd have to, right? That yeah, many people. Yeah, yeah 30 million have to. people. Uh, yeah. Yes, they probably need No that. doubt. And again, if, uh, if you, Shahid, or anybody else has any insight into what Eric was asking about, people wanting to have their photo taken, but then not even caring about seeing it, just wanting that uh, mm -hmm. that interaction, wanting that yeah. attention. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear that, too. That's a, yeah. that is a really interesting observation, for sure. Mm. Wow. Um, this is somewhere in rural Rajasthan, northeastern mm -hmm. India, northwestern India, excuse me. And again, this is the strength, simplicity, and pride. These are women who are working on a project to dig out a little reservoir that they can use for irrigating. Look at the different ages and the woman in the background with the metal pot over her head, one of the things I found interesting in India is that that's how earth has moved. Mm. Um, you don't see wheelbarrows, you see those. And it's because a wheelbarrow isn't gonna go to these places because a wheelbarrow breaks down faster because those pots are available. And so all these women um, stopped for a little bit and allowed me to take their picture. Again, part of this organization called Sewa. Uh, again, though, these <laughs> look at those women. They did not dress up to go downtown and be fancy for some outing. They're out in the fields working and this is gorgeous. Yep, this gorgeous. Is gorgeous. I love the multi generations there. You know, it's it really tells a story there. And this is Phil Flash again. Nice. <laughs> so in Varanasi, uh, an amazing. You get leave. You get there and you'll feel like you are on another planet or at least Felucia, uh, 5,000 years old. And one of the things that, you know, if, if, if you're Hindu, you want to die there and be uh, cremated there and have your ashes put in the Ganges. So I found this little alley where they would bring down grandpas and grandmas on these little totes. And this guy became friends with him. This is his business. His business is to take the last family portrait. And if you look in the background, you can see the last portrait of grandma, grandpa, whoever, and piles of wood right before they light it up, and they want the last portrait. And uh, that's what his business was. Again, up in Rajasthan, and this is, this is all done with flash. Hmm. Um, she's Sorry. looking out the door light, but the door light was too soft, so I emphasize the door light with a flash. And behind her, I wanted to put light on the, the back wall. So there's a light up above that I put a, a gel mm. on to warm it up. And other than that, it's, it's, a, it's a mother and her child inside of her house. The, the buildings were so beautiful as well. All earth, earth floor, earth walls, very simple, very clean. They redid the floor every six months. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of traditional architecture, it's ab absolutely fabulous. Uh, Again, the beauty of people and the, be the beauty of the surroundings that they're in. So I want to know when are you going to do your workshop? Because I would love to see a wide-angle lens of your setup, you mm. know, where the lights are, all that stuff of just, you know, a wide-angle pullback. Yeah. yeah. We did a bit of that when we were in Mexico. Yeah, yeah we, did, uh, we did. It's on the video, actually. Mm. Um, it has nothing to do with this workshop, but we can link to that. We'll put a link to it down below. Uh, there is a behind-the-scenes video that we put together from the Mexico workshop in Oaxaca. And there's some video in there of Some of it of with shooting with the flashes. Yeah, with yeah. the flash setup. So yeah. you could it's have Eric there. Eric and he could show that. It's a workshop come. within the workshop. <laughs> and it's, 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 a, it's a fairly light setup. You're carrying around two, uh, two light stands that aren't too heavy. Yep. A couple of flashes and a couple of umbrellas. Yep. So it's, it's gear. It's certainly more than hauling around you know, one lens and one body, which is what I usually do but yeah but it's still relatively but it's small but it's still relatively small and light and then it creates an opportunity to sort of craft a kind of image that would be pretty tricky to get otherwise yeah 
Yeah, we've talked about off-camera flash photography on the show before, and it's something the topic we'll certainly discuss again. And, and to have that ability, a small little flash, it's one thing to be working in the studios. And, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, if you're a mm -hmm. studio photographer, you have big, huge lights and big, huge modifiers. Mm -hmm. But to travel like you are with a single strobe, or maybe two strobes that are wirelessly controlled, light stands, um, you're using umbrellas? Yep. Right, yep. Umbrellas which fold up really small. I mean, it's an umbrella, literally. It folds up a nice, long, skinny thing. Stick that next to the light stand, and you've got a really portable, lightweight packet that you can carry. The, the, whole, the, whole, the whole kit can go into a backpack that size <laughs> with camera and lens, and then the umbrella strapped on the outside and the sticks. Mm. Yeah. And you can carry it around mm. like that. You know, Yeah, it's a little bit cumbersome if you're going on and off buses and so on and so forth, but for a specific photo project, um, like this, again, it's it's not heavy gear. Right. You can take it on the plane, you can come and go with it. Right. And uh, again, you can create a certain kind of imagery if that's what you're into, which happens to be what I'm into. There you go. Another monastery, Lovely. this happens to be in Cambodia in Siem Reap, but uh, you know, the multi-dimensions that the picture within the picture that's gives fun. and uh, how, how grateful he was. Very cool, very nice. You know, I love to shoot hands too. I mean, there's something about hands they just tell a story about you know the history of someone's life, of what they do, what they want to do, where you know what what uh, what they're all about. Mm. Uh, Look this at is that the one light! I saw yeah. Wow. This is uh, light. another rural house in Rajasthan, mm. and um, you know you walk into the room. And you see that light coming through the ceiling as a photographer, and just like your mouth starts watering. <laughs> I gotta make a picture here. I gotta make a picture here. I become unreasonable in situations like this. <laughs> but again, this light is augmented by flash. So, not the light coming through the ceiling, which was natural, not the haze, which was natural in there. Um, it's, it, but the light on them, there was not the right kind of light on them. Mm. So, there's a light, you can almost see the light stand, maybe not on this photo, but um, up above going over the beam, and then the light shoots straight down from behind that beam that's above their heads and is illuminating them. And so okay. that's how I got the light the way I needed it to be. Wow. And maybe I had a flash in front of me as well. I can't remember anymore. But there is one overhead at any rate. That's great. Mm. And, and that's, I think that's a big part of it. It's, it's just your portraits, they're more obvious to the photographer, at least, that there is a flash added to them because of that separation. Mm -hmm. But something like this, it's, it's not necessarily obvious. Mm -hmm. it's, to be able to use a flash to simply augment what's already there. I'm not yeah. trying to build a whole new scene. I'm not trying to create something that isn't there. It's just what's there is great, but it just needs a little extra help, a little extra brightness here um, to be able to do that with a light like that. Is, is like, like, like the previous photo of the woman looking out the doorway and slightly holding her child, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's not evident that there's flash being used there. That could have been a light bulb behind her that was lighting mm -hmm. up the back of sure. her house, yep. which is what I was trying to do or with Or a that. different time of day or whatever. Different time of day just... and door light coming in. Yeah. You know, and so sometimes I try to use flash that way. Obviously, if I'm back... If I've got sun as backlight and I'm filling with the flash, different story. But for something like this, yeah, how can you make it look like there's no flash and create a scene that your eye would naturally see but it's very hard to pick up with right. a camera? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and in indoors, that's a great setting for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a common approach to that now would be to do more of a high dynamic range type of a thing. Maybe you're doing mm -hmm. multiple shots, you're going to blend it together, or you're just going to rely on the wide dynamic range of your camera and really lift up the shadows in Lightroom or something, but when you actually add the light, it, it, there is a difference. It mm -hmm. is a different image, um, arguably a better image, when you have the light naturally there and you're not trying to just take those pixels and make and, them a bit brighter. Squeeze them. Pull right. things that aren't really there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Squeezing absolutely. the pixels. Squeeze Squeezing those the pixels. pixels. That could be the next title of your next book. Squeezing pixels. <laughs> yeah. Squeezing pixels. Squeezing pixels. That's it. That is the last image That's that we it? pulled together here. You, didn't you have uh, like 80 more so that he, you brought? Well, I didn't want to show you up, but unfortunately, you know, I feel a little um, trounced on by your great photography, and yeah. I, I need my own show, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're a great photographer, and it's always a pleasure to see what you come up with. It's just kind of amazing. Well, so I think we should both you, go to India. I mean, what the heck? Works for me. You know? I'm good. Few million people, all those, all those. You uh, think that you think there's men? enough? You think there's enough opportunities in India that we could each have wow. pictures that weren't like me standing over your shoulder taking your picture and you standing over my shoulder and taking my picture? Like well, there might be enough opportunities. That I we think can so. Create some visual the diversity. Thing, that's the thing. Possibly. By the time January comes, I'm going to be the holy man. You, know? you already I'm the going. holy this man. Is, this is you're what the, it's all you're about. You're the holy man of I'm Briscoe getting a head start, and I am going to be the holy man. This is the yeah. holy man look. Uh, I don't well, think so. No, yeah. I got, so I got the mix. I got this. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. So, um, 
about books that are out. Are you uh, going to be, you, you, uh, excuse me, um, excuse me, look, it goes with his shirt. Unbelievable. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> it goes right with his shirt. So what Joseph wanted to tell you all morning is that my son and I, a couple years ago, uh, rode our bicycles the length of Route 66. Is there a way to edit this out? I, no, uh, no, yeah, we're rolling. Yeah. Route 66, almost 3,000 <laughs> miles. And... Um, Joanne Feinberg and Kathy Roselli did this amazing film on this won all kinds of awards by the same title. And this book is going to be on Amazon day after tomorrow. And, oh, uh, nice. Yes, and it's a beautifully, beautifully photographed book that is... Uh, who, who shot it for you? Uh, with my little Sony. And, but you know, ironically, I didn't take my printer with me up Route 66, which I should have. One you more just, thing you just used your charm on Route 66. That's what I did. There are, again, one of the things, one of maybe two or three things that I really love about you. Maybe two things that I really love about you. Well, I <laughs> guess the, whittling thing, it down. the yeah. thing that I love about you, Chris, maybe, is yeah, that like the kind of, you're yeah. so good. I call you Dr. Access. So good at creating um, mm. encounters with people and with those encounters, creating wonderful photography. Oh, like, and, so. and, and Route 66, this book and the other books you've done, have these pictures that you create where... Who knows how you did it? You went into New Orleans, you went into Cambodia, you went up Route 66 on the bike with your son, for God's sake, which is such a kick-ass adventure. And you're meeting people along the way. Isn't, isn't one of the stories you say is that on that trip you said to your son, Quincy, every day we're going to talk to, what, one new person, 10 every new Every morning we've been our bicycles and said, Quincy, today our goal is to make three new friends. And it didn't, it could be some desert rat out in the middle wandering the streets in the desert collecting trash or someone at the Waffle House. Didn't matter, and I just, I just love that. And the same thing in India. You know, if people that are lucky enough to sign you know, up for a workshop, house in India. oh, we'll find one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, after six weeks, you'll want one. Yeah, but um, you just wander, and that's a great thing. You just wander up to people, and it's you got to leave yeah. fear at home. That you do. Mm. That you do. Another great picture. All right, so I'm here. Um, this is. <laughs> It's ridiculously sized because it's a 4K screen, but hey, let me pull this up. This is the webpage. If you go to photojoseph.com slash India, you'll see all the details here. The full itinerary is in here of what uh, mm -hmm. what to expect every day broken down. Now, obviously, there's those uh, luxury tents we were talking about. I mean, that's not you. Look, you get a running, wow. you get running water. You get a toilet. Oh there's God. a shower in the front. <laughs> I know, seriously. Ah. It's a tent. It's a lot wow. nicer than my house. There you go. <laughs> and this price that I saw includes all this? So, yeah. So, the price is, there we go, $59.95, and that is, that's, Everything from when you land to when you get off the plane again, I'd get on the plane again to head home. Uh, so obviously airfare in and out of India isn't included, but we're around India, airfare is included, all the ground transportation, all the access to all the locations, uh, everything there, all the meals. Meals? All you can, you know, if you want a tip, the gratuity is not included. That's pretty standard, but, um, but you know, wow. it's, there's not wow. much. And as we're being told, this, you're not going to be handing out money to people. That's not the way it is. Here's a little map showing roughly where we're going to be going. So we're starting uh, in Kolkata. Uh, going to Varanasi and then out to Allahabad mm. for the Kumela uh, mm. and then uh, back to Varanasi and then up to New Delhi. Mm. That's, our, that's our basic route on there. And yeah, it's all in here. And also, just so you know, too, this is a the pricing on this way is set up. It's a scaling price. So if we get that price, the fifty nine ninety five, that's the highest it would be. And if we get here, if I pull this back up on screen now, you can see it. If we get um, up to six guests, six or seven guests, then the price drops to fifty four ninety five per person. If we get that eighth person, then the price drops to fifty two forty five, and that's for everybody. So if you pay in advance and fold, then obviously you will get a refund uh, for the difference there. So and if Eric to... goes, does my price drop down or go up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, I'll have to think about that yeah, one. you got an app to figure that kind of stuff out. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but photojoseph.com slash India, that's where all of that is. Put that up there on the screen one more time. Just type in that URL and you will learn all about it. Um, gentlemen, where can this fine audience learn more about you guys? Chris, you go first. The National Enquirer? <laughs> no, um, chrisbriscoe.com, C-H-R-I-S-B-R-I-S-C-O-E, and same on, uh, on Instagram. And uh, Eric Mindling, you are where? Eric Mindling at ericmindling.com. And that is E-R-I-C-M-I-N-D-L-I-N-G.com. And if you, you use... got the HTTP... Oh, HTTP backslash backslash. backslash. <laughs> <laughs> Mindling, by the way, is spelled like kindling, but with an M. So like you can work that name. out. Yeah. And you can find me with that name on Instagram as well. That's where we're found. And I want to I I just... Say thank you to Shahid because he's put up a great comment mm. up on the on the chat here. It says, 
Yes, people love to have their photos taken. It is just for the experience. Their sense of privacy or security quite different from other parts of the world. I think that hits it. Like, and that, that point about the sense of privacy, um, which we have internalized in a certain way here in the West and in India, is a whole different story. So just for the experience of it, that's, that's great. And also, um, Shirag, I, I see your contacts, and um, I will take note of that. And when I come back to Ahmedabad, I will certainly look you up. Thanks for tuning in today, too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who's uh, who tuned in today what as well. Fun. If you have any questions, if you're not watching this live, if you have any questions, pop them into the comments down below. I will uh, try and get these folks to tune into the comments every once in a while, see if there's any questions you have for them directly on there. That would be awesome. And uh, I'll, or I'll direct them to them, direct them your way and try and get you answers. But I think uh, it is it is clearly an incredible experience going to India. Yeah. If you have the opportunity, we're creating that opportunity, but if you can't go with us, um, it's just not possible for you. Get out there at some point while you can. It's uh, it's an incredible thing to do. And, and one more thing um, is that if you do your hunting, you can find pretty good prices uh, for airfare to New Delhi. Mm. It's not an arm and a leg. You can, you can find tickets for five fifty, six hundred dollars $600, which is spectacular. It's a, it's a long ways to go for, for not too big of a price. Yeah, yeah, that is. That is, absolutely. All right, General. Well, thank you again for coming on today. I appreciate it. What a it. pleasure. What a uh, pleasure. Doctor. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's always great to nice hang to out with you, you too. It seemed like a nice this, guy. This, out this guy well had me over for dinner audio. the other night. He is the sweetest little boy. Oh, my gosh. Three years old, <laughs> and he is the <laughs> sweetest too. boy. I hope you get to see pictures of his son. I thought it's a while. I throw Yuri. a picture on the, on the Oh, the good. Chat. Yeah, good, I use good. him for, um, you, you share have, pictures of your kids. you got to have him on this show. He's the star. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, not to mention your wife. Whoa. <laughs> Beautiful. And that's uh, yes, down the show. Thank you very much, already for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thanks again, folks, for coming in. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Let's do this. All right, you guys just zip it for a second, and we'll come back and I'll. I'll Good luck with that. I know, right? Seriously, this is, it's that kind of a show. Isn't it?